All right, it's time for adventures with Fisher. It's like trying to weld a banana. It peeled apart like a banana, I should say. This part was bent forward and down a bit. The back part was split behind a little bit and over on an angle. And this piece of sheet metal here was up like this. So the XLS took a beating last winter. This side here was so badly damaged that I took the whole piece right out. Pretty simple to take out. You pull a pin, you undo these two hoses. There's a bolt back here. You gotta take that out. That kind of locks it in. The whole piece slides right out the end. It slides out pretty easily actually. And it all comes out as one assembly. The cylinder, the spring, there's a, what I call a sleeve and then the wing are all attached. So here's the sleeve. It's, it's, it's pretty much a, it's almost sheet metal. It's pretty thin. Uh, with a couple of brackets on each end so this this hole is where your spring attaches this eye bolt you adjust your tension on that spring with that and the hydraulic cylinder and, and uh, yeah the hydraulic cylinder passes through this big pear-shaped hole and then on the other end is where your pin goes for the wing which we had trouble with removing. And then you've got this, it looked like, at first I thought this was bent, so it's made like that. It's got a, uh, a little depression all the way through the middle there. And now we'll go look at the wing. Over here in front of the bench is uh, the wing. This is the pin I had to remove. We had trouble getting that pin out of there. It was blocked right in, it was rusted solid. So it would not move. We tried our biggest. We started with a small sledge, worked our way up to this big 20 pounder. There you go, that piece is off. So on the end here, this is where your spring hooks on. And this is where the hydraulic cylinder pins into it. The reason why we're doing this is pretty obvious now. So I'm gonna clean up all the rust and uh, we're gonna try and pry that back together and weld it. That's from hitting manhole covers over the winter uh, from the construction site. Got it clamped up in the vising thing. Weighs nothing when everything's unbolted off of it. But we've got a separation up in here. And you see the light. That's supposed to be touching. It's supposed to be like down here. No light getting through. We got it broken. It's broken from one end to the other. Uh, it's bent right there. You can see a little dent right in there. That's from an impact. I'm pretty sure I can fix it. It'll never be the same again, but we're going to clamp. See, even this weld here is starting to break a little bit. Oh, yeah. So I may have to use the torch. I'm going to try and clean all the rust and then maybe clamp it together at this end, put a weld down here. It's missing, completely missing a chunk of metal right here. I think it was like that a little bit before we got it. So that's from rubbing on curbs. The top part of the old plastic uh, end was missing there. So right, it's coming along uh, nicer than I, it, it always goes a little better than I imagined because it looked like it was just about impossible to fix this back up. So we am gonna get the treble light and I've already done a few welds in here. It's coming along. I'm actually thinking about uh, cutting that little bit of metal off there. It's not really doing any good. I think it's going to prevent that from coming down flat again. There's cracks here. I'm going to V out those cracks. Uh, clamp that down so this is tight in here and re-weld. Even over here, there's a. I think there's a gap there that's not supposed to be there. And then this whole corner is missing. Uh, I don't know how much time I want to put into this, but... I think I'm going to try and rebuild this corner. It shouldn't be that time consuming. I'll cut this weld off right here. You can kind of see where the metal ends right here. Cut that weld off. Try and clamp these back. It's both, both sides of this are bent. This is bent upwards, this tiny piece of U-channel. And this piece of flat plate at the back is bent downwards. But that turned out pretty good. If I... Go over that with a hard disk and then switch to a flap disk. Get that back flat. Should look okay. And uh, I'm going to continue welding in here. 
I think I'm going to weld it solid right up to this point anyway, right up to about here where my finger is, from where I stopped welding here. Yep. I'll show you as we progress. Into the end of this repair, I've got the whole backside pretty welded. I got uh, that's as far as I'm going to go with that. The front's welded solid all the way across. The corner here, I just took a piece of this square sock I have here, and I came across with that instead of trying to cut jigsaw puzzle pieces. I clamped the little the leftover piece in the vise just to hold it there while I'm. It's very awkward to work on this, so while I'm welding on it, keep it from falling off the workbench. And then I added this little piece here. I think this is a, is it five half inch by half inch, but seemed to fit pretty good in that corner. Come up, and I'm gonna fill this whole area with well. This is all worn off. I think this this piece, this rib, originally came down to roughly about where this ends now. So, yeah, it's coming. So here's the front. It's about the straightest I can get it. Something uh, was behind here and would not allow this to come down when I hammered on it, but that's the way it's going to be. And I just welded it solid. It just had, originally it just had a little inch and a half weld at the mi end, middle, and this end over here. So it's welded solid right across. Now, I think that's the way. Anything hitting the ground like that should be welded pretty solid. They should have added another inch, but it just adds cost and weight. So they're trying to cut corners. So speaking of cut corners, that's the front side of that. I add a little tiny triangular piece. The only piece I cut that was uh, made to fit there, and it really kind of matched up pretty good. I like the way that turned out. Yeah. So, yeah, we we'll have a little more strength in that corner, and I think that's going to end up wearing down again, so I'm not too worried about how pretty it looks. Uh, that's just a little, you know, it's a little inch and a half or two inch piece of U-channel. You can see it right here. And where it's, this is the passenger side, so it rubs on the curb, and that's why it's, in worse shape than the other end. It's pretty original. It's got a little bit worn off, but not near as much as as this side. So, yeah, we're coming near the end of the repair, and uh, you know, I think it's as good as new. Usually, it is when I'm done. All right, here's a better view of the back, and there's the square piece down below, a little smaller piece, maybe three eighths, and this is probably half inch. I'm gonna lay a little bead of weld up in that corner. And you can see you need a round hole like this to get the nut in there. I think a washer goes in too, so I couldn't come that much closer here. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's it's turning out pretty good. It's another day, and you know it's always the same. About two thirds, half or two thirds of the way through, you start to think probably would have been a better decision just to buy a new part. But here we are. I got one more crack. I'm gonna V that out and weld it. This little piece is kind of an indicator there's a weak point there, so the other wing on the other side has the exact same crack. It's a little further in here, and it's on the face of it too. This one here is only on this one little tab that's been welded behind. And there's no other way to make that stronger because it's got to slide in, so it's got to clear the mold board of the main part of the plow. And I'm going to go over it with, I got some yellow paint. I'm just going to go over it with one of those flap discs, sanding discs, and try and paint it. This stuff here is like some sort of hard plastic that they stick on there. I think it's a, some sort of a friction. Uh, it's supposed to make it help slide. It's probably Teflon. Helps slide it over as uh, it's traveling in or out. And I, well, I think I mentioned this already, so I don't know where I left off last time, but yeah, that corner is kind of rebuilt. I'd like to do the same on the other one, but it's we didn't take it off the plow, so I'd have to do it all upside down, which is, I don't know, it's not easy to do. So, yeah, we'll get that, uh, we'll clean it up with a wire brush and a flap disc, put a little paint, and, uh, and I want to finish this up because I want to move on to the next 
list of jobs we got to do around here. It's endless. You know, it's, it's windy as hell today. And uh, we got to get rid of the wind noise with this. You can probably hear wind right now. It's just blowing right through here. So just stick this on uh, the microphone on the phone. And it gets rid of that. I think that's, it helps because I just did a little short recording and there was no wind noise at all. I checked it. This thing here got painted last week. I, I did a whole bunch of welding on it. It's like trying to weld a banana. It peeled apart like a banana, I should say. This part was bent forward and down a bit. The back part was split behind a little bit and over on an angle. And this piece of sheet metal here was up like this. So I had to clamp all that back. And I just pried like hell in the vise, got it all as close as I could. And I'm pretty impressed with that. It looks a lot better. And I welded it solid right across. Originally it had four little inch, inch and a quarter, inch and an eighth welds. One, two, you can still see this one, three, and then one on the end. Why the fisher didn't just weld one solid bead down there? This, this is too thin, this sheet metal. Doesn't have enough strength, so they... The actual weld was strong enough, but it just tore right around the sheet metal like someone took a plasma cutter and cut around it just from the impacts on this down here. This is a piece that sticks out, gets everything hits this corner out here. And I rebuilt the corner a little bit. I just used some square stock I had laying around. Everything was missing. Down here, all the metal is missing on this corner. And I, I added this piece because, uh, you know, pretty soon it was going to be up above the hole for the plastic, the polyurethane. It was right across like that. So I'm pretty happy the way it turned out. And I re welded these, these four welds. I think I should have welded that solid too, but uh, I mean, you know, where are you going to stop, you know? So it's back together we're gonna to put it back on the truck on the on the plow and uh and here here's your spot there's a little hole down there you can see way in there Get it focus and that's where the water can drain or you can maybe spray a little oil in there but once it's back together you can't access that spot so i think i'm going to drill Maybe a little quarter inch or five sixteenths hole here and here, just to allow the oil spray hose to get up in there and spray that. It's all rust inside there. It's solid rust from uh, you know being down in the you know, it's three inches off the road when you're plowing snow. So all the salt and slush and snow and water and everything goes in there and doesn't you know has trouble getting out. So we'll do that. I'm going to give it one more coat of paint today and uh, it, it rained every time I went to paint it last week it rained and I was grinding and stuff in the shop so I didn't really want to do it in there yep so that's what I'm up to